We've concluded our first year of the strategic plan, so uh, this is our opportunity to give the board and the community an update on our uh, end of year report for the uh, TUSD strategic plan. I'd like to begin with a short uh, video. In November, 61 students from Pueblo Magnet High School were awarded early admission to the University of Arizona in a surprise assembly. Project Focus launched. 10 students from TUSD's Community Transition Program also accepted to the U of A. The first point I want to make is I'm not concerned with any level of additional audits on the district. The legislative session proved to be a challenging one with more than 100 bills affecting education. Dr. Sanchez testified and helped change minds about Tucson Unified. This is not your father's TUSD. There is a whole new spirit at TUSD. I've been in here off and on for the last 12 years. This is the first time Tucson Unified's come along and actually I really was glad to hear what they had to say. A, a sea change. Our fine arts program garnered the award for best community for music education. The community collaborated with us on the five-year strategic plan, leading to the Common Ground Award from the Metropolitan Pima Alliance. The Leadership Prep Academy is Tucson Unified's initiative to grow our own leaders. In April, Tucson turned red, white, and blue for Borman Elementary School, a touching tribute to the students and families on Davis Monthan Air Force Base. A huge initiative to streamline our systems is underway with the ERP. ERP stands for Enterprise Resource Planning, and our launch date is July 1, 2015. Just opened last July, the Infant and Early Learning Centers win Expect More Arizona's People's Choice Award. Six sites were chosen as Innovation Zone schools this year. Intensive training and new ways of thinking are transforming these campuses. They'll become models for the district, the state, and the nation. The district's solar project celebrates Arizona Forward, the governor's award for technology and innovation. Our growing network of school gardens goes a step further. Four of our schools are now certified to serve with the students, teachers, and volunteers produce. That's a picture of the mayor right there and let her know that this is the mayor and then that's my picture, I'm the yeah. superintendent. The mayor of Tucson joined us on our two Steps to Success walks to help bring students who have dropped out back. Mathematics exceeds the standards, writing exceeds the standards. I mean, that's some good stuff. Here, we continue to work with and support our public schools. You'd be surprised, but the mayor or the school superintendent knocking on your door, sometimes waking you up and asking you to get back in school, it has an effect. Of the students targeted, 269 re-enrolled. That's giving back opportunity. Um, actually, I was still asleep <laughs> when I got that knock. And um, as soon as I opened it, the first thing I see is actually the chief of police. <laughs> I, honestly, it really did motivate me to come to actually try to come back to school. In late May, 14 Tucson Unified High Schools recognized their graduating seniors. A new era begins as these young men and women envision a life for themselves and our community. The first Celebration of the Stars program was held in early May, recognizing and thanking some of the outstanding staff we have in Tucson Unified School District. That's a really great summary of a lot of the work that's gone on this year as tied to the strategic plan. As the board will note, the strategic plan had 25 areas and to ensure that the strategic plan wasn't just a plan that sat on the shelf, there were multiple things that we did. The first thing is um, I requested that the strategic plan and its goals be my goals and how the board judges me and how the board judges 
my effectiveness. The only way to make sure that the plan moves forward is you tie the plan uh, to the superintendent. And if the superintendent is focused on the plan, it gets done. If the superintendent is focused on other things, then the plan sits on the shelf. So the other thing we did is we held quarterly meetings throughout the district. We held a couple at Duffy. Then we held one at Sabino. We held one at uh, Tucson High. We held another at Catalina. And so we held quarterly update meetings. So that way on Saturdays, people from the community could come in and get an update. The other thing we did is every month, we provided a update to the governing board on key projects like the ERP, but we also provided the governing board updates in curriculum, diversity, communication, facilities, and finance. And we had whole departments come up to this very dais and say, here's where we are as we went throughout the year. And that was a request by the governing board. The governing board asked when the vote was given and for the high level plan, it was a 5 0 vote. All right, so how are we going to make sure that this thing takes uh, level? How, how are we going to make sure this thing takes hold? And so I said, well, we'll come back and report monthly, which we have. We've reported back monthly each of the key areas. And so the first area I'll begin with is communications. The first part was to inform staff about the strategic plan. And we've informed staff about the strategic plan. I have a teacher focus group, and we've talked about the strategic plan. They provided input into the strategic plan. We provided feedback back to them to give to the campus on the strategic plan. Information about where we are with the strategic plan has also gone out in some of our video updates, as well as my superintendent's newsletter that goes out, and it tells people what we're doing, where we are, and it also invites people to the various strategic planning sessions. Improve internal communications with staff. That was the second area. Everybody has been extremely positive about ParentLink. We use ParentLink not just for those lockdown situations, but we also use ParentLink to invite parents to open house events, to magnet events, to uh, fine arts events, to tell parents, hey, it's time to put in for uh, magnet schools. It's time to put in for the lottery. Don't forget to turn in your paperwork and information for next year's registration. Don't forget tax credit. Uh, we even uh, provided some legislative updates through ParentLink and said, check us out on the web, see what we're up to, see what we're doing. So ParentLink's been big. ParentLink isn't just a phone call, it's also an email. And so people have been getting emails and we're evolving to where people will begin getting uh, text messages. I think the board noted with our newsletter that we sent out this week, there's an opt-in option. In the past, we sent a newsletter out, but you couldn't really opt in. So you got it. Um, and, and that was basically it. Now you can get a copy of the newsletter, forward it to somebody, they can say, I want it, and they can opt in, and then the listserv grows. So more people can now get the newsletter and the update by just opting in. And so that's a new feature for internal communication. As I mentioned, I have my principal's focus group where we, or my teacher's focus group where we bring in uh, one teacher from each campus, we take in their feedback, we give information, we break up into groups that talk about the strategic plan. I also have a principal's focus group which involves our uh, Eli principal's group, our principal's union. And uh, they sit in as do other principals from across the district. And we talk about issues that are important to them. They submit ideas to, the, uh, to be talked about. And they kind of serve as a smaller group before we take things out to all of the principals. The principal, we also have our, instruct, um, our ILA meetings where um, our principals come together three times a month. Two times out of the month, assistant principals come in as do central office administrators, and we talk about the big areas that tie to the strategic plan and the USP and where those things uh, intersect. In terms of inviting stakeholders to share opinions, we've uh, sent out surveys. I think the board has seen surveys that uh, we've shared, and if you take a look at uh, your book, you'll see links that actually reference some of the surveys that we've sent out. And uh, we do solicit information as uh, the board just saw for the budget presentation. There was a link and we're asking for information to be brought in. We'll pull it all together and we'll share it with the board. Communicate with diverse groups. Um, at every event we do, We've had language translators available. We've had the translation equipment available. I've done some presentations in Spanish when I note that there are Spanish speakers there available too and directly address them. And so in terms of that level of communication, I've submitted information over to bilingual 
uh, magazines and we presented articles in English and Spanish. We do big parent links uh, that come out. Um, you know, we always record them in Spanish and send them out in Spanish as well. And so we're taking a look at how we can expand our reach in those areas. We also work through our uh, directors over um, African American, Native American, um, and uh, our Asian Pacific Islander, uh, as well as our uh, Mexican American groups. And um, I meet with a parent advisory group with our Native Americans every month at uh, Southwest Center. You know, I drive out there. I don't ask them to come up here. I drive out there. I sit down. They bring their questions to the table. Dr. Morado, Ms. Gallegos, uh, Mr. Butler, uh, we all sit around there and take notes and then we get back with them and we address their concerns. Some have been about transportation, some have been about how do you monitor kids after school, what kind of help can we provide for tutoring. So uh, we also have that group. We have an African American task force that we've been working with as well. And with our African American task force, we've uh, brought in other experts uh, from the uh, outside of our media community. Uh, Dr. Peterkin, uh, who was with Harvard University and he brought a other uh, people to the table and so you know how do we communicate with all of our groups uh, create a family focused culture uh, you know we opened our family engagement center at uh, the Wakefield site and uh, we did a presentation and celebration there um, we're uh, preparing to open sites also at um, Catalina and then at uh, Palo Verde as well and so we'll have our diversity directors uh, there and we'll have um, uh, the same type of amenities that we provide at Wakefield with computers and translation services and parenting classes uh, as well. So uh, that's one of the key pieces. And again, going back to our parent league, our communication, our social media, I think if you'll take a look at uh, page eight in your handout, You'll see the uh, number of likes on Facebook. I think uh, our communication department has done an amazing job in leveraging social media. If you take a look at page seven, you'll actually see that our post reach uh, from uh, 321 to 327 was 23,417. And so that means people liked us and then they had people who liked them who liked us and passed our information forward and that's how that whole social media thing works and then that's how it gets you in trouble too. So. Um, you can see an example of a newsletter. You can see example of our use of social media, tweets, so on and so forth. And then you can see with our creative family-based culture on page 11, you'll see again the picture of the red, white, and blue. And we had people as far as Japan and the Philippines who had posted on our Facebook page. So when we look at communications, 100% of what we said is our year one goals, we hit. In terms of curriculum, Design an easy and accessible scope and sequence. It's on the web. We didn't buy it. We didn't go out <coughs> and get a vendor to provide it for us. We brought our teachers in over the last year and a half. We asked them, what do you think is the best way to take the standards, the Arizona College and Career Ready standards, organize them, order them, what's the appropriate level of depth, what should it look like, at what point should we cover a certain set of topics, how does this align with the grade below and the grade above, how does this prepare you? So instead of us saying, well, we know better than you and here's what you need, we brought teachers in, our master teachers, who work well with all of our students and said, what do you think? And so they helped us build a comprehensive curriculum and it's currently in the process of being revised and updated by a review of how our students did on data as well as teachers feeling, well, you know, we thought that was gonna look really good in that order, but now we need to move it over here. Culturally responsive curriculum, uh, if the board will remember, we've hired a you know, full-time uh, director for CRC and a full-time director for Multicultural Studies. They've been working in informing what we do with our scope and sequence. And uh, the board, if it'll remember, uh, approved a comprehensive book list uh, for our libraries in both English and Spanish. And we're talking about over, uh, I think it was $1.5 million in books for, the, uh, for our libraries in uh, English and Spanish and so uh, those book lists were informed by our CRC department as well as our multicultural uh, department, our multicultural director. With purposeful professional development, if the board will take a look at the artifacts that are again presented in the end of the year report, you'll see the professional development calendar 
And what's very telling is we've had 24 PD meetings, PD administrators in Central Site 15 meetings, PD learning support specialists 22 meetings, PD site teachers 31 meetings. So if you take a look at the amount of professional development again, uh, we didn't send people all over the place, we didn't hire people to come in, it was our people working with and training our people. Use data to drive instructional decisions. Uh, you know, we engaged in quarterly assessments with ATI, Adela, SuccessMaker. Uh, we took Ames information, uh, Alex information. We've trained principals on data digs. We spent quite a bit of time doing that. And then on our UVA campuses, they really got into data digs as part of the UVA process. And so when we talk about data to drive instructional decisions, we've also been looking at discipline data. That's been very big on our radar, so we've been taking a look at how we're gonna deal with and address that. We've put plans together. So data has been crucial. Our goal is to move to fewer central office benchmark assessments and to really empower teachers with the tools to create their short cycle assessments to inform their teaching and perhaps go from three to four district benchmark assessments to maybe one at mid-year and then uh, one uh, that would give us data maybe two months before the AZ Merit comes out for final adjustments and tweaks, but really turn uh, with our uh, new testing package, turn that back to teachers to be able to know what's in the curriculum scope and sequence guide, identify that, pull that. So a lot of that data use is now going from uh, principals driving that conversation to teachers driving that conversation, but we've set the groundwork and then implement standards measurement system. Um, as I mentioned, we've uh, used quite a bit, and we spent a lot of time this year with uh, teachers grading each other's writing assessments because we put a very heavy emphasis on writing this year. And so uh, teachers from different grades on the same campus graded each other's writing assessments. And so we really wanted to ensure that we had uh, good cross-training and iterator reliability as we took a look at students' written work. So all of the areas that we were asked, all of the areas that were in the strategic plan for curriculum, we hit them. In diversity, a reflective curriculum. As I mentioned, our CRC classes rolled out second semester to seven schools, next year to all of them. We're in the process now of um, interviewing and um, recruiting teachers for our CRC classes. And so our uh, CRC department is very heavily involved in that process to make sure we have the people with the uh, right perspective, the right heart, the right spirit, and the right passion so that these classes are engaging and meaningful to our students who signed up for them. We're also now working much more on the multicultural side on the classes that are our uh, general education, algebra or history or government or uh, English classes. In terms of recruitment and retention, um, you know, as I uh, mentioned with recruitment and retention, uh, we have gone to uh, historic uh, African-American colleges to recruit and we've sent people um, out also to the uh, you know predominant uh, Latino or Hispanic colleges serving colleges to recruit we've uh, done fairs here and involved our teachers union to help out in those and we've spent quite a bit of time really bringing people in from the outside we look forward to uh, seeing what the numbers are so not only did we hit the H ACU campuses and the HBCU campuses, uh, we build a mechanism to really quantify and measure the success of going to these different sites so that we can return because we had a great return on investment or not because we didn't see a lot of candidates. At this point in time, if we were to say to the plaintiffs, well, we didn't go to that university because we didn't get a lot of people, it's conjecture, but going into next year, that won't be the case. We'll say, Here's how many applicants, here's how many letters we gave, and here's how many people we actually hired from there. And then we can have an informed conversation. Do we spend the money to fly people out and do that again, or do we not? And so that was part of the strategic plan. World Language Options Pilot Program. Um, our charge was to establish feeder patterns, and so we're looking at uh, Spanish, uh, Roberts K-8 to Rincon. We're looking at Arabic, Wright to Doolin, uh, K-8 to uh, Catalina, uh, high school Arabic we're also looking at Maxwell Cade Choya Magnet High School and then Korean Fruit Tendler to Seacrest to uh, Sabino so we're actually looking at some articulated feeder patterns that if you really want to get into world language options you can go through these feeder patterns 
So this is something that we're really uh, taking a look at, and this is just the beginning. And um, I know that there was a certain charter school that said that they had the corner on the market on this, so we decided, well, you know, well, we can get into that too. And so Spanish, because if I believe there was a number somewhere that if you speak Spanish, you can speak with about, you know, anywhere from, I think the number was like 80% of the people in the world. So it was a big number. Arabic, of course, is an emerging language, and then Korea is a language of commerce. The Port of Tucson actually does uh, commerce with Korea. And uh, one of our former Tucson mayors is the ambassador of uh, Arizona to Korea, and vice versa. On information about ALE and accelerated uh, courses, um, we've used ParentLink flyers to notify people about ALE. We've expanded gate testing in high school at ALE, uh, outreach and recruitment to African American students and Hispanic students through the African American Student Services, Mexican American Student Services and Counseling Department. We've held 30 parent community meetings to discuss enrolling in GATE, PAP, and additional student AP support, boot camp, AP tutoring, SAT. And uh, in a previous presentation to the Governing Board, I think you'll remember, we showed the number of increases we had in pre-AP enrollment, which is important because pre-AP today is AP tomorrow. And that was a, that's been an increase. On uh, create and maintain community partnerships. Um, again, you know, we've opened the two uh, family resource centers at Wakefield Palo Verde, and uh, we've reached out to the faith community as uh, well. And um, I just don't wanna uh, go without mentioning the great support we've had with the United Way and the uh, Metro Chamber of Commerce. The Metro Chamber of Commerce has been very supportive. When we had a press conference in this room to talk about current technical education funding, we had both the chairman of the board and the president of the Metro Chamber come and talk about the importance of current technical education funding in Arizona. And they stood side by side with uh, six superintendents and said, this is an economic development issue. So that's a great community partnership that uh, we've uh, really been able to work through and establish. We've had some support through the Hispanic Chamber as well, so I want to be sure that we mention that we've reached out to uh, the multiple chambers of commerce in town and uh, received uh, support from them. All of the areas we were supposed to hit there, we've hit. Facilities, develop green energy audits. In the video, you saw that not only have we developed energy audits, but we've won awards. I think you'll also see that um, in the budget presentation that Ms. Soto had presented earlier, the savings going forward we're projecting are part of our uh, green energy initiatives. I mean, that's big. Now, we're talking over a million dollars in savings just due to being more energy efficient. So it's not just a target that we wanted to hit because it looks good to be green. It's a financial piece too, and it's a financial literacy piece. On the campuses where we have solar panels, there's an educational component that goes to that. Facilities audit. We went through all the campuses, we've audited all the facilities, and this positions us well as we get into year two on the strategic plan, which is a master's facility plan that Mr. Nodino will present on the ninth that actually prepares a way for a bond because when you go from uh, over 20 million in capital funding to 2.5 million uh, and the school facilities board is uh, you know really strapped as well, at some point we're gonna have to talk about some of the very basic safety necessities that are uh, not covered under existing funding. And so our facilities audit is taking a look at everything on all the sites and rated how much longer they can stay in service or if they're well past service as well as the condition of schools and it's all comparative across the district so it's uh, really taking a look at where we are as a district and so this facilities audit was also part of the USP but it was a big piece that will condition us for a conversation on uh, you know what the state isn't covering but what needs to be covered to take care of our schools and students. Improved customer service. Uh, facilities has created a report card system where they've sent the report card out, they've asked how are we doing, they've gotten the feedback and it's informed some of their services. Uh, the other thing that's, uh, that the board has um, approved has been the uh, software package to where we'll be able to do this in a very automated way. We'll be able to get the feedback in an automated way. We'll be able to gauge customer satisfaction turnaround time. So that's all part of improving customer satisfaction is getting that package in, not just for technology services and facilities, but for both. So the board approved both initiatives for technology services, our IPRU, what's our turnaround, and facilities. And so in the interim, we didn't just sit. Uh, Mr. Duncan and company created a, 
actual report card and they've taken that information, they've looked at it, they've reviewed it, and they've been working to improve their services even without the software package, which they knew was on the way. So I have applaud them for sitting, not sitting in idly, but actually getting engaged. Training for uh, techno, uh, technological equipment. Uh, we have, uh, if you take a look at the uh, artifacts again, you'll see the trainings we've held. We've had um, online trainings, we've had trainings in person. We have people that are on the sites that provide training and support. And so uh, this is an area that as we've began uh, rolling out the uh, you know computers on wheels and all these other initiatives uh, we've begun building a comprehensive training piece with it and um, the board uh, will remember that uh, we had to replace the director of uh, technology um, instructional technology and so that's a big charge as we move into the next year and then address vandalism and other damage um, the board will remember we put a uh, procurement uh, request forward for uh, new locks and new keys. We have SROs in certain campuses. We've taken a look at our uh, rotation of school safety going out and we've worked diligently to deal with community complaints. Uh, Mr. Coleman and company have been very quick in uh, as people report things to them to communicate with facilities so facilities can go out and clean things up. Our goal if it's on a school campus is to get things cleaned up before the kids show up if we find it at night or before the school day starts and if it's on uh, we work to get it removed in uh, a, a very quick turnaround time and so um, that's an area that we're really looking at um, some of the other things going forward uh, new locks new gates new keys on some of those sites and it goes without saying that uh, the sites that the school district has sold as well as two that it's put back into commission those are sites that are more secure than they were when they were left wide open. When Brickton and Shoemaker were left wide open, those were vandalism concerns. And so they're less so now because there are people that are using them. And uh, when you take a look at Wakefield, it's less of a vandalism concern because we have used it for the Family <coughs> Engagement Center. I'd love to use it soon for um, a school again. But if you take a look at uh, the sites we sold, such as Wrightstown and others, so all those areas we've addressed, what was in the plan? On finance, phase in district-wide ERP system. We're on target, July 1 it launches. And we presented that to the board every month. And everybody's been part of this. And we've provided so much training. If you look at the artifacts, we've provided so much training. They were doing training today. I went down to uh, ask uh, Ms. Maiden a question. And they were uh, down there going through uh, some of the paces with the new ERP system. Maximize existing revenue and resources. I mean, I think that goes without saying. You know, uh, other districts are going to four days and going half day K, and uh, we found ways to be able to provide some sustainable salary increases for our people and not have to do it at the expense of increasing class load. Accuracy and timely reports with the new ERP. Um, that's exciting because the goal was to get us positioned July 1 to have that. And uh, legislative advocacy. Um, you know, there, there were uh, many wake up at four, get over there by eight and wait all day and present late in the evening. There were a lot of people we had a chance to talk to. There were a lot of people we had a chance to work with. And I think our uh, new lobbyist group and traffic, it's did a great job. They even came to uh, Tucson and went to our Pima collaborative with board and uh, administrators and gave updates on what they saw as legislative priorities and they've been instrumental in working with us with current technical education funding. And then identify external funding and resources. <coughs> I think if you take a look again at um, the artifacts that we've uh, presented, um, we've really enhanced our tax credit approach, uh, grant for food services, healthy kids <coughs> from school to school, school safety SRO grant. And so we continue to see grants roll in and we've been very uh, involved and engaged in those areas. We've hit all of those areas and so I'll be more than happy to address any questions about where we stand. Uh, you have, I mean, and this isn't a, a comprehensive review. These are just a handful of the artifacts that go to each of the goals. We really had to uh, decide uh, how thick this thing was going to be. So this is really, just to give you one or two or three examples, it's not the uh, entirety of it and I think it's well over a hundred pages.